Newt Gingrich, dear friend, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor, author of March to the Majority, The Real Story of the Republican Revolution. Newt, welcome back, as always. So you wrote a tough piece. Uh, I read it in the New York Sun. Will the Democratic Party stand up in the coming election and defeat its terrorist faction? And, Newt, you mentioned get him in the primaries, but you know what? Even before you get to the primaries, the leadership of the Democratic Party has not said a single word, so far as I know, of criticism of these people who are pro Hamas and anti Israel. No, I think that's true. And I think that the leadership is probably frightened of them. And I think that, uh, again, you know, the Democratic Party is led from the left, it's intimidated by the left. But you have nine or ten members, as I indicated in that New York Sun article, that are just totally pro-terrorist. And you had the classic example yesterday where Tlaib was attacking, uh, Congresswoman Tlaib was attacking Israel for the attacking the hospital, which Israel did not do. I'm hoping somebody will go up to her today and say, are you willing to say the same things about Islamic Jihad now that you know it was an Islamic Jihad rocket? that was killing people at that hospital. And my bet is she won't answer, that she will not condemn Islamic Jihad. None of them have condemned the killing of babies. None of them have condemned the raping of women. None of them have condemned uh, taking grandmothers hostage. Um, these people are pro-terrorists, and that's what they should be called. Uh, mm. There's no question in my mind that AOC and, and Ilhan and Tlaib and their, and their friends are just plain pro-terrorist members, the House ought to censure them, uh, and the American tradition, they should face an opponent in the primary because they're in very Democratic districts. Uh, you probably can't beat them in a general election, but you could beat them in a primary. I mean, has a member of the leadership, any member of the Democratic leadership or the Biden White House said anything either about them or to them directly? I have no idea about what they said to him directly. It was embarrassing to watch the Democratic House leader yesterday uh, say, well, gee, I, I haven't read the, the tweets. I haven't read uh, the transcript. That's uh, just plain baloney. Yeah. Uh, it's very clear. It was on television. Uh, it was is in the newspapers. Um, they are, the, the Democratic caucus is afraid to stand up against terrorists. It's afraid to be pro-Israel. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how many votes they get against any kind of aid package for Israel. And I think that it just tells you how much the Democratic Party has decayed from the period where it was very pro-Israeli to a point where it has a very large pro-terrorist faction. I mean, it's sort of like the president of Harvard or the president of U Penn or one of these guys. They're afraid to say anything against the students demonstrating uh, for Hamas or against, you know, the anti-Semit, the anti-Semitism strain is very significant. I mean, I would think this has to be some kind of election year issue, you know, going beyond the primaries. It's just um, a difference between the GOP and the Democrats. Well, look, on the left wing of the Democratic Party, anti-Semitism and the desire to destroy Israel is now a dominant real factor. Uh, and I think that people need to recognize that the left is deeply opposed to democracy. They're deeply opposed to the survival of Israel. Uh, and I think that's part of a general pattern on the left. And I think that it, you see this with these huge demonstrations. And it's going to raise real questions. I was glad to see the House Republicans beginning to talk about hearings on whether or not to take away the tax deductible status of places like Harvard mm. and University of Pennsylvania mm. and Yale. Uh, Harvard has 40 plus billion dollars, billion, mm. in their endowment. And uh, I think that has to be looked at. And you have to look also at where the money comes from, because the universities won't tell you. Uh, Newt, I wrote your name in on the last ballot as Speaker of the House, because <coughs> I thought you did such a good job 25 years ago. Was I wrong? I wrote you in. I, you know, I said, I'm for Gingrich. Balanced, oh, no. You it's, balanced it's, the budget, you cut taxes, you have reformed <laughs> welfare. It was a hell of a performance. I'm looking for that kind of speaker right now, Mr. Gingrich. <laughs> well, listen, I think the whole conference is, they're, but they're going to have to get in a room. I saw just a few minutes ago, Jim Jordan has decided to go back and try again because it turned wow. out what I thought was a good idea uh, to have McHenry, uh, the current speaker pro tem, 
stay on until January 3rd. I mean, these folks have got to calm down. Mm. The level of anger, uh, the level of hostility in the conference, all of it started by eight traitors, and that's what they were, traitors, who abandoned their party and were allied with the Democrats against 96% of the Republican Party with no idea what they would do if they won. Mm. Uh, they have caused chaos, they've embarrassed the Republican Party, and they've weakened the United States at a time when there are two major wars underway. Uh, and it's really, truly, uh, I think, the most disgraceful behavior by Republicans in my lifetime. Afraid to say so, but I know you're right. I'm voting for Gingrich. I did then, and I am now. Newt, you're great <laughs> to do this. We appreciate it. All right, thank